It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam Lasant Show. Now here's your host, Sam Lasant. You know, folks, uh, one out of four girls will be sexually abused before the age of 18, and one out of six boys will be sexually abused before the age of 18. Now keep in mind, folks, these are only based on only reported uh, cases. Uh, today's show is going to be uh, very interesting. I have as a guest uh, from Sorrento Gardens, Adrian Winley, and she is the Stewards of Children's Program Administrator uh, dealing with uh, sexually abused children. Uh, and as you know, in light of what happened with Jerry Sandusky, there's been a big spotlight on the state of Pennsylvania, and a lot of things are happening. Uh, and it's very, uh, very encouraging to see that Ed Payne and his group, Sorrento Gardens, uh, have, um, have brought on Adrian, who's experienced in this area. And we're going to talk about a lot of things. I think it's a very important show for parents uh, to really tune in, listen to it. You know we're on the website, so you can watch it anywhere in the world at ssptv.com. Now let me welcome my good friend here, Adrian Winley. Adrian, how are you? I am well. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. Good. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having us Okay. On. This is an interesting thing. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a subject matter that, you know, you don't like to talk about, but you have to talk about it, okay? And so tell me a little bit about you and how you got involved with this. I lived in Iowa, and I was the executive director of a young women's resource center, which served young women between the ages of 11 and 21. And at that time, we had a, a, just an outbreak of young women that were answering men on the internet who were offering to keep their children while they went to work. And so that was one of the initial happenings, and I thought, oh, we've got a problem. We've got to do something about this. And then I met Marilyn Vanderbur, who was a former Miss America. I went to a, an event where she spoke, and she talked about having, a, she was an incest survivor for many, many years. And her father continued to abuse children until he died at the age of 74. So I thought, this is, this is an issue that needs to be addressed. And then I, I met someone from the Darkness to Light Foundation, and they had just started Steward of, Stewards of Children, and they were looking for people to train adults and put the responsibility on adults for uh, protecting our children. So that was when I became certified in 2006. And ever since then, I've been facilitating these trainings. And we've trained over 100 people now in Luzerne and Schuylkill, Schuylkill County. And um, we're continuing to train. And, and it all boils down to basically education, okay? Yes. There, there are many factors, as, as, as you will talk about today on the show, uh, of, you know, um, signs uh, of, of sexual abuse and um, what we could do in education is important. And you always hear the things that, well, it cannot happen to me, but unfortunately sometimes it does. Yeah. So, um, so the, the Darkness to Light program is, is basically what it, it believes that adults should be taking proactive steps, okay? Yes. And um, in what respect? The responsibility of protecting the child lies on the <coughs> adult. It falls on the adult. We are responsible for protecting our children. They cannot protect themselves. So we talk about the seven steps to protecting your child. And the first step is to learn the facts. Look at the facts about just the data that indicates how many children are sexually abused. And you mentioned the one in four girls and the one in six boys. And keep in mind, this is only based on reported cases. God knows how many are not reported. I know. Yeah. And WNEP did uh, report in 2010 that Luzerne County is the, has the third highest number of reports for the state of Pennsylvania. And that was what made me decide that I need to do something here in Pennsylvania, right where we are, right where I am. Okay, so the first step yes. is, is recognize. Learn the facts. Okay, yes. and second step. Talk to the child. Talk to the child. Mm -hmm. In what respect? Just ask questions when the child becomes withdrawn. What age? Any age, and always believe the child. That is the key point. When a child tells you something has happened, you have to believe the child. And I hear so many stories of someone who said, I told my mother, and she didn't believe me. 
I know a young man who passed away just as we moved here. He was in Iowa, and he was abused by a priest from the time he was age 8 to the time he was 13. He was abused by the parish priest. When he told his father, his father told him, I'm going to kill you. How dare you accuse our priest of such behavior? And this young man resorted to drinking and drugs, which is how Sorrento Gardens became involved in this. Um, he resorted to that, and he contracted AIDS with his lifestyle, and he died in August a year ago. He was abused, an adult did not believe him. Mm -hmm. His dad did not believe him. Mm -hmm. So believe the child. Talk about it. Ask open-ended questions. Don't say, did someone abuse you? But say, what happened? Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Get the child to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. Third. The third step is to do something. Respond. Respond to it. There are local numbers that you can call, Child Serve, um, and they handle it from there. Contact the police. File a police report. And sometimes people may be hesitant in that area. For, they may be hesitant in that area. For, re, uh, for retaliation from... Yes. Okay, and what advice you have there on the third step? We talk about the third step, and we talk about how to respond to a child. When a child comes to you, what do you say? We do role playing with that. We do role playing. One of the things we talk about is calling your private parts by their names. Because when you have cutesy names, pedophiles know and they'll make it look like a game. We, have, we show a video of survivors of sexual abuse and one young man talks about how it progressed into games where he would invite boys to his home and then he would play games with them, make them think it was a game. He would use cutesy names and um, slang words instead of the words that you call your private parts. Mm -hmm. And so we talk a lot about having these talks with children. Mm -hmm. And when I served as the director of the women's organization, the young women's organization, I asked each and every one of them did your mother talk to you or did your parents talk to you about sex? They all said no. They all said no. I had another program there that was, there were women under the age of 17 who had been arrested for something. This was our justice group. And I talked with each and every one of those young women. And they resorted to the lifestyle because they needed attention there was some need in their life that was not being met. The other thing that stunned me was that each and every one of those young women had been sexually abused. Folks, I'm talking to Adrienne Winley, who is the um, Stewards of Children's Program Administrator at Sorrento Gardens. Her phone number is 455-9902. I want to make a note here, folks. She mentioned about a uh, priest uh, abuse, okay, and um, I know priests get a bad rap, and I have to, if you Google, it's, it's a very, very, very minute minority. It's a shame that we have some of those priests who have scarred many priests uh, who are doing a fabulous job. And I got to compliment Bishop Bambera uh, in, in the Diocese of Scranton, and, and every uh, Sunday in the bulletin, it states about sexual abuse, etc., reported immediately. Uh, and so it's, it's just a, a small majority, but you know, a lot of comedians like to make a lot of fun of it and, and ridicule the Catholic priest, and I think it's unfair. Uh, it's a, such a small a minority, uh, and it also happens in other uh, religions as well. Uh, but there are many, many great priests out there, a majority of them folks that are out there trying to help and do the best they can. And my hat's off to all the priests uh, that are, are living some, it's, it's the scars of some of the fallen ones. And you know what they need, folks? A lot of prayers. They Believe me, they do. I'll be back right after this. Thank you for staying with us, folks. A very educational show. Parents, parents, please uh, call your friends up. Have them watch the Sam LaSanne Show. My guest is Adrian Winley, and she is the um, Stewards of Children's Program Administrator of Sorrento Gardens, and it's extremely important. We're talking about child abuse, and if you know uh, how important this is, uh, in a standard speaker on Wednesday, 
on the front page that is sweeping changes suggested for, sta for state child abuse law. Uh, the Pennsylvania Task Force on Child Protection recommends uh, rewriting state law, re redefining what constitutes child abuse and expanding the list of people who are required to report uh, suspected uh, abuse. Uh, and as you can see, the state is very much concerned about this. Now, uh, Adrian, we were talking about the steps, the seven steps that parents sh should know to protect their children. Let's start from one again in case someone just tuned in okay. and, and give us those step seven steps. Sure, I think I missed one anyway. Okay. But the first one is to just learn the facts. Learn the facts of, about where your child is and the <coughs> probability and possibility that abuse could occur. And this could happen in a daycare, in any kind of sitting where there is there are children being served. The first, the second step is to minimize opportunity. And one of the things that we train educators on, and we also have a video that we show about a school teacher who says that he was told by a janitor not to close the door. So they were minimizing opportunity. Anytime you take your child to, for instance, drum lessons, and it's in the back of a building with no windows and the door is shut, that's something to be aware of because that could indicate that there's a reason why the doors are shut, why parents can't come in. Just be aware of that, but minimize the opportunity one-on-one, -on -one, leaving your child alone with someone. So we talk about having two people present when you're with a child. Number three is talk about it. Talk to your child about what to look for. The, 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 Perpetrator is not typically the scary guy in the park with the trench coat on. 90% of ab those abused know their abuser. And we have PSAs at Darkness to Light that show it could be Uncle Buddy. It could be the coach. Pedophiles typically like to hang out where the children are. And they appear to be the nice person. They can be male or female. There's one person in the video who's a survivor whose aunt was the abuser. And she said she never told anybody because they wouldn't believe her. Her aunt was very smooth and she said her aunt had a PhD. So this woman was idolized by her family. And for her to tell was very difficult. She didn't tell until she was much over, older until she was involved with drugs and alcohol, then she told. And that was the life-changing factor that drove her to that life, lifestyle. And then she told when all of that came out. Then step number four is just stay alert. And I mentioned that room for drum lessons or piano lessons with the door closed. There's no window or the door is locked. Be cautious of people who say you can't come and visit while we're working together. Make sure it's an open door opportunity for a parent to come in and observe at all times. A lot of things happen in preschool. There was a case out in California with a kindergarten teacher who abused all the children. Well, not all of them, but some of the children. And he would take <coughs> them into the bathroom and shut the door and do that in the bathroom. He would put tape over their mouths and blind, just put blindfolds on them and abuse them. And so these things can happen. We've seen them happen. I see it in the news. Step number five is make a plan. If your child comes to you saying that someone has abused them, what will you do? And this is part of what we train in the Darkness to Light Stewards of Children program. We have the numbers that you call in the state of Pennsylvania to report this abuse. First and foremost, call the police, but there are organizations that do the investigations and carry it through and stay with you and support you through the process of prosecuting this person. So that is number, number five. Number six is act on suspicions. I mentioned earlier that if your child becomes withdrawn, or his behavior or her behavior changes. Ask questions. 
Ask them what happened. I've noticed that you've changed. What has happened? Tell me about it. Open-ended questions. Then step number seven is get involved. And that involves what we're doing with stewards of children. This is not only for educators, um, people who work at the Y or other youth serving organizations. And by the way, I'd like to say congratulations to the YMCA, YWCA in Hazleton. They're getting all of their staff trained. That's a wonderful group of people. They're learning about stewards of children and the seven steps and what to do in order to protect the children. So I want to congratulate them on that. But we're reaching out to youth serving organizations. We've just done a mass mailing to the, the daycare organizations so that they can send their staff to get trained in the Stewards of Children program. And parents can get involved. Get involved. Form a group in your neighborhood that talks about protecting the children. Get on the websites that list the perpetrators that are in your neighborhood. Someone who's on that state website as a perpetrator. Learn and share that information with other people. But the responsibility for protecting the children remains with the adult. You know, the interesting thing about parents, you know, uh, we always, you know, always wanted to know what our kids were doing, where they're going, who their friends are, where they're playing, uh, and ask questions. How was your day in school? If they went somewhere with somebody, yeah. uh, how was it? How was Mrs. Smith? How was Mr. Lassant? How yes. was blah, blah, blah? Overnights. A lot yeah. of kids, like my granddaughter, and, and they go over great places, okay? But my, my daughter makes sure uh, that she knows where they're going to be, the, yeah. the parents, who where they're staying, etc. Because there's a lot of things people take for granted, and you don't know that. And it's, and it's unfortunate we have to be so cautious today, uh, oh, sometimes overcautious, but it's better to be overcautious than not at all. Yes. Uh, and, and I think sometimes we take things for granted, okay? We think the kids are, you know, they're, if they're over the neighbor's house, okay, get to know who your neighbors are, yes. yeah, especially if they're going overnights. If they're staying overnights at someone's home, Who's in there? Are, are there? are there adults? Are there kids? Are there know a lot about that family? Or, or what, because and people, you know, I think they take it for granted, uh, and and I, that's sad. Yes, it is. And so many parents work now. <clears throat> yes. the children are left at home, and a lot of the children are are contacted by people that they meet on the internet. And I worked with the um, attorney general's government task force in Iowa about internet safety for children. And that, that came about when my girls at the center where I served were talking to perpetrators on the internet. And these perpetrators wanted to keep their children. So not only with overnights do we need to be vigilant and do we need to be aware of where our children are going, but also be aware of what they're doing on the internet. Who are they talking to? That sort of thing. Technology is a blessing and a curse at the yes, same it time. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. because perpetrators know how to work it. Mm -hmm. They know how to use it. You've got to be very vigilant. You Par do. Parents or guardians have to be very vigilant and know what their, what their kids are doing at all times and question them. Yes. Okay, question yes. them. Yes. Uh, and, and I think sometimes, again, we fought, you know, you're busy working, you're busy doing this, mm -hmm. you're having meetings, etc. You're assuming when they go to practice, mm -hmm. you know, Ask him, how was yes. practice today? Yes. Who'd you meet? What did yes. you say? What'd you, where'd you go? Did you meet anyone? You know, so it, it, you have to stay involved. And oh, I, yes. I feel sorry for those, those, um, those kids who are, who parents are not paying attention. Yes. And that's where the education comes in. It's a very simple matter. It starts at the home, I think. Yes, it does. You know, and I think from that point, it evolves. Yes. Uh, folks, I'm talking to Adrian Windley, uh, who is the Stewards of Children's Program administrator. I think it's a fabulous thing that uh, they have at Sermental Gardens. Ed Payne got herself a, a fabulous person here uh, and, and, and getting the word out. Okay, it's all education. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam LaSant, 24-7, SSPTV.com. Please check us out, particularly with this show. Uh, my guest is Adrian Windley who is the Stewards of Children Program Administrator talking about child abuse. You know, the primary reason that the public is not sufficiently aware of child abuse uh, as a problem is that 73% of child victims do not tell anyone about the abuse for at least a year. 45% of victims do not tell anyone for at least five years. 
some never disclose it, okay? And this is sad, and that's why you have to ask questions. Know where your children ask a lot of questions. When we talk about sexual behavior, we were just talking in a break, uh, there are certain things that you, there's telltale signs that we, we mentioned. And what is that with sexual behavior with children? With little children, <coughs> it's normal for them to touch themselves and want to explore. But when your child becomes of age where they're talking and playing with other children and, and doing things that you can see, it's not normal for them to talk in sexual language. It's not normal for them to act in a sexual way um, towards you or towards other children. And that needs to be explored a little further. Start asking questions. Start becoming aware of the, what is causing this behavior. Now, you have to be, as we said, very vigilant. Yes. Okay. Now, the profile of a pedophile. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say, that a profile of a pedophile? The profile of a pedophile. <coughs> we have the poster child for that right here in Pennsylvania with Jerry Sandusky. And it starts with offering something to the child that the child may not be getting at home. And we are aware of that he started a nonprofit organization to help disadvantaged children. And the disadvantaged child is very vulnerable because they're disadvantaged and they're not getting something. So it, it starts with being a nice guy. We see the video clips of him playing football, playing with them, and it looks like he's providing opportunities for them to be <coughs> children. And that was his, his um, breeding ground for it, it, upcoming victims, really, because he was choosing his victims out of that group, some of them. He was a coach, and we heard the testimonies of some of his victims who survived. He gave gifts, and that is one of the parts of the profile that we talk about, all of the gift-giving. And then it may be a person who becomes friends with your parents. He, the, he, he's trusted or she's trusted by the parents. So the parent is willing to let the child leave with that person. And once again, the being vigilant, when your child comes home, is your child's behavior changed? Is the child being withdrawn? Does the child hide out in his or her room? That needs to be investigated when your child changes. Does your child scream and cry when you're saying that you will send them with a particular person? If the child reacts in a negative way and doesn't want to go, ask the child, what is the reason that you're behaving this way with this person? Get them to talk and be aware. Become vigilant again. So here again, folks, we're talking about education. Adrian Whitley is the um, Stewards of Children's Program Administrator. You gotta pay attention, there's no question about it. Ask questions, know where they're going, if they went someplace, especially if they're going someplace overnight. What do you know about where they're staying? Security, is, is it a safe place? You know, there's all these questions. Yes, it's a little difficult to be a parent and guardian today, but you see what happens? Yes. Uh, they let it go. They let it go by the wayside. Be vigilant. Take care of it. Now, Adrian could be contacted at 455-9902. If you suspect any type of abuse, please report it immediately. Please report it immediately. Adrian, I wish you the best. Tell Ed Payne I said hi. I will. And all those fine people are doing a great job. Okay? Thank you. Uh, folks, don't forget, uh, as a show is seen many times, uh, please go to our website. Have a lot of people watch the show. It's education, and Adrian's a pro at it. Uh, it's ssptv.com, 24-7s. Thank you so much for all the fine emails and the comments on the show and those constructive criticisms as well. We'll see you next time.